All right, thank you for clicking on the video. We're gonna get ahead of this whole stop thing. I'm gonna sit this camera right here on Lace's car, and we're gonna sit here, and I'm gonna tell you about this freaking stop freaking thing that has plagued my life. You're watching I Drive TV. Here's what I'm gonna do for those people that want a TikTok version of this. What's up guys, thank you for clicking on the video. So basically, I've redone the stops. They used to be this way, nobody liked them, so I made them this way, and now there's actually a black oxide bolt right here. I changed this tab, now I'll be welding it on the back side and on the front side in four positions. I got, I got a contract guy from Barstow, California. He's gonna come here, he's gonna weld 1,100 stops, he's gonna bring them back to me. The delay was that I had to get all the supply, all the hardware, I had to bring it all into town, I had to get baggies and labels, I had to send out emails, get product information, talk to you guys, do some testing, and then I figured out what it was, so then after figuring out what it was then i had a plan put the plan into motion got all the supplies and it's coming to you this week all right so that's the version for those of you who just want me to shut the fuck up and get to the point now we can get to the regular video all right so i'm just going to keep this right to the point and i'm going to get clear on the uh the situation with the these these stops these recall things oh man i'm telling you this here so this was the original stop you see this one here? Not this one. This one. See that? It was a hole. It was a hole in a tab. I welded it on the bottom. They were simple. They worked. Not one problem. Well, not one problem for me. Now, I did a survey, and then one in four of you, because some people have big fingers, because some people had a difficult time getting in there, because some people are just not that mechanically capable, they didn't like that system. And... I made a decision to try and make it easier for the 25%. And that is where, that is where my life took a turn. <laughs> so the situation was, is I decided to take the step, um, which adds production time for me, um, to, to weld the nut on. And by welding a nut on there in place, uh, it eliminated the jam nut scenario. Yeah, so obviously, you know, if this system's like this, all I would have had to do, you screw it down, you, you lock the nut with just one, you know, single wrench, and now you've got your stop height, it should be locked in place. So what my thoughts were was the armature comes down and hits this thing like this. And so I was like, well, you know, in terms of welding this for production, that means that the nut on top and the washer that's usually underneath it when that force goes down through the threads, it's, it's, it's hitting the nut and it's hitting the washer and transferring that to the tab, to the tab that welds and actually goes all the way through to the backside. So I'm like, all the load is going that way. There's no need for the nut to be, um, to be welded uh, in any you know, capacity. As surprising as it was, when the arm would come down and hit this nut right here, it would actually pull this welded nut upward. And so it would kind of, kind of angle. I just didn't see that happening. It was, it was very surprising to me um, that that took place. Um, it took me uh, by surprise. So let me get to the point then. So um, I started shipping these out in December and um, thinking that they were fine. Uh, once the kits started getting delivered and we had a lot out there already, um, basically I started to hear from people that they said, hey, we're having issues with the stops either moving or the tab breaking off and things like that. Well, when I went from this simple design here, which was just very, very simple, the tab is, is, is wi as wide as the slot is in the bottom of this, it would just slide in and I'd weld it from the backside. So this kind of, is that a trapezoid, a trapezoidal shape? Um, it actually has a relief cut inside so I could sit it on top and then it would slot through all the way flush with the bottom and the backside, but actually sit on top of there. So it kind of has an indent and then goes down. Um, welding them from the back is good. They don't move. Um, initially, I was welding them on the front. And so because there was still just ever so small amount of clearance, they were just breaking off. And, and so this stuff is just, it's really the result of trying to be efficient from a production standpoint um it it's also you know to me it, there was no corner cutting it was it was calculated in my mind but it was clearly a miscalculation so 
As if that miscalculation wasn't enough, I thought, well, let me make an even bigger miscalculation and tell everybody about it uh, all at once. And so my, my mind told me, I don't regret the decision. I'll, I'll be honest with you. I, even though it's causing me great pain um, and internal agony, I don't regret it because I, I just wanted everybody to know what they had. And so if I got a product and it, were, and it had issues, um, I, I would want to know what those issues are. So um, that, that's still the consumer in me. That's still the car enthusiast in me saying, regardless of what I should do from a business perspective, from an enthusiast perspective, from like a, just an honorable guy perspective, I'm just going to tell all these people, look, you know, I'm just going to warn you, we figured something out with these stops. Um, being a car person, uh, error one was I used the term recall. Um, <laughs> I will never do that again. Um, I did not realize that this is like, um, this is like going to uh, an LGBT rally with a Trump shirt on. Um, it, it, it is going to cause problems. So, um, yeah, that's what the word recall does to people in the car world. It causes them panic and fear and, and, and all kinds of things that I just didn't really see coming, honestly. I was just thinking, I'll just be honest about it. I'll use a term in the email to get your attention because... When you send an email to people, you're like, oh, I need an attention grabbing. It even tells you, uh, you know, when I send out in the system, it's like, hey, Night Drive TV, send an engaging and attention getting subject line and everybody will read your email. So I'm like, okay, I'll use the word recall. Um, well, what that led to was people that just saw the headline and didn't read any of the email and emailed me and said, uh, I'll send my kit back. I'm going to cancel my order. I'm going to do all these things. And uh, and, and many did, you know, many canceled the order. I refunded a lot of people. Um, you know, I, I try to understand, um, people's reactions to things, um, not giving me a chance. You know, it's, it's one of those things that really started to feel like literally 24 hours in. I was like, my God, um, you know, I, I, I felt like I did the right thing, but I did not calculate for this reaction that some people would have to, um, kind of get angry and kind of get really upset. And, and so it, it just was very odd to me, but you know, I, I managed them however best I could. Um, and you know, what I've found overall is there's just a lot of anger around this, this, this stop situation. So, um, the point is here we are, we're five weeks later or so after I announced and sent that email and I got into another mistake, another problem. Um, when I sent out the email, telling people that I recognized that there was an issue. I didn't make clear, well, despite the fact that my, many people didn't read the email anyway, I didn't make clear uh, in the email that just because I'm identifying a problem doesn't mean I have a solution yet. So I just tried to get ahead of it and, um, and just let people know, hey, look, word of warning, um, you may have an issue with the stop. Um, solutions are being worked on obviously, and I'm going to try and resolve it as quick as possible. Well, so in quick timeline, let me tell you how this works. Um, at least how it worked for me. Um, I sent the email out. I crafted that email that day. I had to make a page for everybody to go to, to put in their information. So I would have their current address and all those people. And I could count how many people responded. Um, that was step one. That was a bit of work. Um, once I had those people coming in, I was getting bombarded with emails for the next literal, I would say week and a half. And it was, it was a lot. It was, it, it, it's not one email. It's like somebody emails me, I email them back, then they email back, then I email them back. And then when you compound that by, you know, 50 people, uh, even I would say it was 50 out of 500 maybe, or 400. Um, I don't know the exact numbers, but it was a lot. Um, that bled my time. It, it really mentally exhausted me. I, I really thought, Jesus, you know, this is going to be a big problem for me. Um, but, but I just kind of attacked it and said, I'm just going to move forward. So, um, what I had to do initially was just really work on it and figure out. And so I was testing for about a week to try and really figure out. Cause I, like I said, I did not see how they were failing. It, it, it was making me think it was a user error. Um, but I, I had enough, uh, people, there was about four people pretty quickly that said, now there's definitely something wrong. Um, so that, that involved me kind of raking on them and putting them in my car and opening and closing them. And so what it led to was about a week and a half or two weeks in or so, something like that, 
Um, I had a plan of what I was going to do. Um, I did the CAD redesign. I had to submit that to um, the steel uh, cutter, the people that laser cut all this stuff for me. I had to submit that to them. Um, there was about a week and a half timeline to get the parts shipped to me. Um, once the parts were shipped to me, that took a period. I would say that put me in the beginning of April, uh, something like that, maybe late March. Um, I had to weld and kind of test, and I decided that I also wanted to make a hardware change because I figured if I'm going to resolve this, I have to be sure because God forbid I don't want to get into another problem with these. So um, I really looked at the hardware and I made a change um, to the, um, the, the main nut, I guess you could say, the bolt uh, rather, that goes into the stop. And so it's not like this anymore. It's a black oxide flat top. So the top of this is 10 millimeters at its widest point, And obviously it's a hexagon shape. The current nut or bolt that I send with these and will go out with the recall stops are a 12 millimeter uh, flat top, completely flat. And you can see even the edges of this, they kind of roll off. And so it's, it's causing a bit of an issue. There's stampings on top of this. The one I'm going to ship out is completely flat. And obviously I have to balance cost. Um, so overall, the, the, the recall process here is, is going to cost in the, I, w I will estimate $6,000. It's probably going to, it's a loss for me. Um, and so, you know, in addition to that, obviously that means I need hundreds of baggies to put these in, hundreds of labels. I need the labor to put it together. I needed bags for new hardware. I had to order all the hardware. Um, and then it comes down to production of actually making these. Uh, amidst our current production weekly of lights and all the things that I have to do week to week and day to day. So um, people have emailed me very upset. Um, you know, what's the deal? Um, you know, I, I think they thought that the day that they submitted the email meant that that's the day the replacement was going to go. And I mean, I, I guess that's natural for people to assume that. But, um, you know, I've done recalls. Um, I have a recall on an air fryer and um, they, they told us it was a literal fire hazard. It was going to burn down the house. And um, we had to cut the cord off, take a picture of it, submit it. And it's been like four months so um, or three months, something like that. So, you know, like I said, I think, I think these things, these bulletins are sent out when a problem is, is recognized in order to, to help people and say, hey, you know, be aware of this and, and avoid issues. I don't want people going down the road and this happening and, and stuff like that. So that was my concern. I, I don't want anybody to get caught out. Um, but that doesn't mean I have an immediate solution. So the point is, where are we today? Today is April 20th. It is faux 20, son. I hope y'all getting your dope in. Uh, I'm not, but me, it's my birthday. So, um, so <laughs> I've never been that guy. Uh, if I was, I, people probably got me weed for my, my birthday, but that's not me. But anyway, um, congratulations to you if it's 420 and you're pumped up. Um, the Starship launched today and blew up, and that was cool. Um, so where are we today in FO20? So what I have now is I have everything complete. I have all the hardware. I have the baggies. I have all the stuff. I have all the steel. I have tested and repeatedly tested and bent these into oblivion, and I've got a procedure that I like. Um, the tabs have changed. The shape has changed on those. Um, and so I have someone that is going to contract weld these, um, Friday. Well, I don't know what it is today, Thursday. I don't even know what day it is. Friday he's coming and I'm getting them Sunday and we will ship them Tuesday. So, um, and, and I aim to ship to, to everybody. So, um, as far as those of you who, um, have a stop that looks like this, but you may be like, Oh, am I the recall person? I'm going to tell you the way to identify the difference. Um, so some of these, um, obviously I had these and I, and once I recognized the issue immediately, I came up with a fix using the existing stuff that I had, but it was very labor intensive. And what I ended up doing is if you look at your stops, they'll be welded right here at the tip. This was uh, this is pretty thin right between here, but I ended up welding the nut there in a third position. And then I welded these on the backside with just two tacks. You don't need any more than that. Um, <clears throat> and so that's how you'll be able to tell. You'll still have this, this nut. You won't have the black oxide, but I've told people if you have any alignment issues, because these arms are sloppy, just, just push this inward. Just bend it inward this way and just get it to hit and it's going to be fine. So I, I hope I've answered all the questions on this deal. I really want to put this behind me. It's delayed the bezels. It's delayed um, 
you know, it's delayed a lot of things. And, um, you know, it's just, <sighs> I think back to this one and, you know, this, this simple, sometimes trying to satisfy everyone is just, you know, it's uh, a lot of lessons learned here. And, you know, I've, I've been in the car business for a very long time. Uh, you know, I've fabricated like full headers, uh, full turbo systems, full cars, um, stuff that, you know, I, I've put 1500 hours into and it went down the racetrack and worked. And, um, but you know, there's just the wildest things can happen. And it's usually something like this. It's small. It, it's, it's not an intentional issue. It's, it's, it's just one of those things, you know what I mean? And so God, it's, it's a, it's a period in time I'm, I'm looking forward to forgetting about, but my issue is mentally, I feel like, am I done with this? Am I done with this? I think so. Um, my feeling is I'm probably in truth going to make like an aluminum, one of these, like something that's outsourced made out of like aluminum with a CNC and has like the best stop system ever. So that I'll never have to think about it again. Um, for now though, I have a contract guy that it's going to weld them. So that's the story on the damn stops. I, I, you know, I hope this puts it to rest. I'm sorry. It's been, I, I, I don't know how to make a six minute video. Everybody thinks that I'm trying to like get ad revenue. I don't even care about ad, ad revenue. I'm trying to communicate to people what the issue is and people just don't have patience. They, you know, they want me to give you the answer in, uh, 10 seconds. So sorry guys. Uh, that's a wrap on the video as far as the stops are concerned, but Hey, look, I got another Tahoe. That means a mega off-road video next on Night Drive TV.